Hello everyone. Okay, we're going to talk now about liver function tests, which are blood tests that we order to see how the liver is doing. And some of the common ones that we'll look at are the transaminases like the aspartate transaminase or AST or the alanine uh, transaminase or ALT. And these have other names. The AST is also called the SGOT and the ALT SGPT. And we have an alkaline phosphatase, which we will commonly just shorten to say ALKFOS, the bilirubin, which we'll commonly say bili, albumin, and coagulation factors, uh, which we'll, you know, we can measure the uh, PT, PTT, and INR, which are blood tests that we commonly get. And all these we will use to assess how the liver is doing. Now, we do call them liver function tests, but the only ones that really test liver function are these. And the other ones, like the AST, the transaminases, and the ALKFOS, uh, are, are released when they're damaged to cells within the liver. So let's go through each of these. You'll remember the hepatic lobule, which is uh, this hexagonal structure filled with hepatocytes. I didn't draw all of them in here, but you can see one here with a central vein, and then we have this trio over here of a bile duct, which I drew in green, a uh, portal arteriole, which I drew in red, and then the portal venule, which I drew in purple. So now let's take a, a moment to go through all the various tests and what they mean. So first, let's look at the transaminases, the alanine transaminase and the aspartate transaminase. And these are enzymes that are present inside the uh, hepatocytes. And so if you get damage to a hepatocyte, these may leak out. And then that's what we would measure in the blood, that there's more of this out there than we would have expected. And normal for this is somewhere in this range, 5 to 40, 5 to 50. You've got to check your hospital's lab to find out what exactly is the range that's normal for you. But so if you see this elevated in the blood, you might think, well, there's damage to liver cells. However... As you can see here, we have AST in other cells as well, like red blood cells and muscle cells of the heart and skeletal muscles. So you don't know if that AST rise is from one of these. So if you have a heart attack or maybe some crush injury, which has torn up some of your muscle, or you've got a hemolytic anemia, you can also have a rise in the AST. So typically we look at this, and if the person has liver disease, we'll blame it on the liver, but you, got, you should know that it's present in other places as well. So the next one we'll talk about is alkaline phosphatase, and this is found in the cells lining the bile ducts. So if you get something that's blocking the bile duct, causing a buildup of bile in here, the pressure increases, and then eventually alkaline phosphatase is leaked out into the blood. And normally we would expect to see like 30 to 120 international units per liter. And if you see anything above that, you got to worry about maybe there's some biliary process going on. Now, just like with the AST that was found in other places, so was ALKFOS. It's found in bone as well as the placenta and other organs. So things that are affecting the bone and the placenta, such as pregnancy or bone diseases, uh, can also cause a rise in the alkaline phosphatase. But remember, in, for our case, we're looking at it as uh, an expression of damage to biliary ducts. So the next thing we should look at is albumin, and that's a big protein that is uh, released, created and released by the liver. And I always think of it as a big, sticky protein that other things can, uh, that other things get stuck to. And the other thing that you need to know about albumin is it exerts oncotic pressure. That means wherever it goes, water tends to follow. And it can be lost through leaky kidneys uh, in something called nephrotic syndrome, which you'll learn in your uh, kidney block. So what you might see is if the albumin is low, it might be because the liver cells, the hepatocyte, is not making enough of this stuff, right? So that would be a sign of damage to the functioning of the liver, or it could be lost through a leaky kidney called nephrotic syndrome. Now, if you have this uh, leak of the kidney or, or decreased production, what's going to happen is that oncotic pressure is lost, and so the water is going to move elsewhere. And then patients tend to get water build up in other places, and so they become edematous because they don't have this albumin keeping the water uh, next to it. So the next thing that we should look at are coagulation factors. 
If you haven't learned about these yet, you soon will, and I have a video that I can share with you. But the coagulation factors are responsible for making blood clot, and so we will measure tests like the PT, PTT, and INR, these are common ones, to see how clotty the blood is. And so if these, if the blood is not clotting as well, you might also suspect that we have some liver damage. So the next thing we should talk about is bilirubin. And I'm sure you learned about this somewhere else, but we're going to review it. So inside of uh, red blood cells is something called hemoglobin, which is a protein that can bind oxygen and carry oxygen to the various parts of the body. Now, one of the breakdown products of hemoglobin is bilirubin. Now, this thing is not soluble in water or blood, uh, and so it needs to be carried around. And who does the carrying? Albumin does. So this bilirubin needs to be made water-soluble so that we can get rid of it, and so we take it to a hepatocyte where it can get conjugated with this glucon gluconal group uh, here, which I depicted with a little G on it. Now this conjugated bilirubin is water-soluble and can be excreted via the bile ducts where it can be converted to urobilinogen, uro like P, and that's what gives urine its uh, yellow color, and uh, stercobilinogen where it can go out in the poop, and that's what makes poop brown. So now let's go over some names of this stuff. So the one with the, the G group on it is called conjugated bilirubin, and the one without the G is the unconjugated bilirubin, obviously. Another name for these is direct and indirect. And the way I remember this is both of these start with a consonant, and both of these start with a vowel, and so they're the same thing. And all of this together is called the total bilirubin. So let's review this real quickly. You have a red blood cell, hemoglobin in it, it gets broken down to bilirubin. It's not water-soluble, it's carried by albumin to the hepatocyte, where it gets conjugated with this glucon, or I can't say that, glucuronal, whatever group, the G group. It gets excreted by the bile, now it is water-soluble, turns into urobilogen, you pee that out, or stercobilogen, you poop that out. So when you order a bilirubin test, you have to ask either for a total bilirubin, which just adds these up, or you want a fractionated one, where you get to, cal where you get to see how much of it is indirect or unconjugated, and how much of it is direct or conjugated. So let's just kind of go through a couple of scenarios here with these. So let's say we have a high bilirubin and a normal conjugated bilirubin. Why could that happen? Well, maybe you are just building up a lot of this bilirubin here, and the liver is trying to conjugate and get rid of it as much as it can, but it, it, has, a, it has a maximum that it can do. It has a point at which it can't do anymore. So you've hit that threshold, and so this stuff is just building up. So you have the normal amount of conjugated bilirubin, but the unconjugated bilirubin is high because you have the excess of hemoglobin being destroyed. And where would that happen? Maybe a hemolytic anemia. You have something that's destroying these red blood cells, releasing the hemoglobin into the bloodstream, and then it is being destroyed. Now, let's look at one more. Let's say you have a high bilirubin, direct, uh, indirect bilirubin, and you also have a high conjugated bilirubin. What's going on here? One possibility is that you have an obstruction of the bile duct. And so what's happening is this conjugated bilirubin is going, being released into the blood, and that's why that's high, and it just backs up the entire system. And so that's why you also have uh, an elevated bilirubin uh, that is, that is uh, unconjugated bilirubin. And that's it. That's this huge talk on liver function tests. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.